In today's tutorial, we're going to be creating a really on-trend alcohol ink mixed media abstract artwork. Some supplies you're going to need to create a piece like this is synthetic watercolor paper or UPO paper for your alcohol inks, a canvas, so I'm using a stretch canvas, but you could also use a wooden artist board if you wanted to instead, alcohol, your alcohol inks of choice, some sealer for your alcohol inks, textured paste, as well as some gloves and either a, a heat gun or a hairdryer, something that you can use to blow across the alcohol inks, resin, so I am using an art resin for this and I'm going to start off with just using three different colored greens. I'm going for a monochromatic color palette and I feel with this because I'm going to be adding resin and texture that it sometimes is nice to not go too like uh, strong or too crazy with your colors because you are going to be adding more sort of uh, dimension and texture to this piece as it goes on and if you go really strong on the first layer of alcohol inks sometimes I find it can be quite busy now saying that you can of course you don't have to do a monochromatic color palette to start with but the easiest option is a monochromatic color palette because you know they're all going to work really harmoniously together. So this tutorial has been requested by Emily and she's requested it a few times. So I'm sorry it took me so long to finally get to this, but if there is ever a particular tutorial that you guys would like to see, please either message me or leave it in the comments below. I am always happy to help in any way I can. So this particular style is becoming more and more popular, really combining alcohol inks and textured paste to create some really beautiful abstract wall art and in particular there is an artist called Kim Rose and I think she's kind of one of the originators for this style so this is very much inspired by her artwork now I'm not 100% sure how she does it but this is how I would do it to start with, I've gotten some of my watercolor synthetic paper or UPO paper and I've poured a bit of my isopropyl alcohol down and then started to drip my alcohol ink colors on top, lifting my paper to start to let it blend and create patterns. And I keep going back in, adding more as I feel it's needed, as well as using my gold alcohol ink on top of all of those colors. Now, I feel like this looks stunning when you do it on quite a large scale version. And if you do want to do a big one, you can get this paper from art supply stores and they do sell it by the meter. So if you do want to do quite a large wall art, you definitely can do that. And the reason why if you work with alcohol inks, you tend to work with UPO paper is because it's quite a slick paper and it doesn't allow the alcohol inks to grip or to sink in the same way a watercolor or a standard paper would so you can tilt it you can lift it you can blend it without those alcohol inks sinking in straight away now if you cannot get a hold of UPO paper you can always do this directly on to a wooden board you just need to prep your wooden board quite well so that way it's nice and slick so what I would do if I went straight onto a wooden board is I would prime it a lot so that way there was no texture for those alcohol inks to grip into there's also no right or wrong way when it comes to applying alcohol inks some people like to dilute their alcohol inks by putting them in some isopropyl alcohol into cups and then pouring it onto their surface Surface, or you can do it the way I did it where I added my isopropyl down first and then dropped the colors directly on top. I've also picked the paper up and tilted it to blend it out or you can also use an air source so a hairdryer, um, you can use a straw to blow it across or a heat gun with the heat setting turned off to start to blow those alcohol inks around and create some patterns. When you do use an air source it will start to dry the alcohol inks as well so that way you can get some really cool patterns. Now you can do as much or as little as you want with this. Now, now I'm not going too crazy with creating too many patterns because I know I'm going to be adding more to this piece as I go along but I just wanted to add a little bit of interest to my first layer and to start with my colors. And when I was happy with how this piece was looking, I just let it air dry for about half an hour to an hour before I started to attach it onto my canvas. Now for this, I'm just using a stretch canvas, 
but I would recommend if you are going to do large pieces, a wooden artist board is best because it will stay completely level, especially on bigger pieces. You'll find stretch canvases can sometimes dip into the center because obviously the canvas is stretched across and it's not super strong. And when you start to add uh, your texture paste and resin on top, it can weigh down the center and make it a slightly uneven. But because this is just a little mini for the purpose of this demo, a stretch canvas is completely fine. Now to mount my Upro paper alcohol ink artwork onto my stretch canvas, I'm going to be covering the entire surface area with a glue. I'm just using a pretty standard art glue. This one is acid free and pH friendly, so it's a really good option to use. And I'm just spreading that across nice and even to the entire area of the canvas. And then I'm gonna be adding my alcohol ink Upo paper artwork on top. And once that has been attached to my canvas, I am then just gonna spray a sealant across the alcohol ink, just so that way it won't reactivate when I do put my next layer of resin over the top. You'll find that if you don't do this, sometimes the inks can go um, and blend back in to the resin and change color. So this one is just from a hardware store and it's a Duramax uh, sealant completely clear spray. And then once that has dried, I'm just gonna be trimming off the excess of my alcohol ink sheet, just because my canvas is a little bit smaller than the piece of paper that I was working on. So I'm just using a Stanley knife to do that. So that way I get some nice crisp edges. Now, when it comes to adding your textured paste layer, there are so many options out there that you can use to create your texture. You can go to the hardware store and get some uh, wall filler, some spackle. This is Giprock that I'm using mixed in with some art medium. And you can also go to the art supply store and there is that many different sort of modeling paste, textured paste, uh, flexible art mediums out there that you can use and it really comes down to personal preference. So this is a mixture of some Giprock and also a little bit of a flexible modeling medium. And I believe this one is from Liquitex that I've mixed in together. Now, the reason why I like to use this one and sort of like a Giprock is because I wanna be able to sand this back once I have applied it. So that way I can get that really beautiful smooth top to it. If I use a medium that can't be sanded back, it will probably be a bit harder to get that perfectly smooth finish. I'm using just a palette knife and I'm just working and building it up and applying it wherever I kind of want to have a little bit of texture to it. So there is, once again, no right or wrong way in where you apply your texture paste, whether you want to have more texture paste than alcohol ink showing, or whether you want to have more of your alcohol ink layer and just your texture paste on the outside edges. It really just comes down to personal preference. And I find kind of just going, adding a little bit, looking at it, applying a little bit more, sort of building it up, not going too strong to start with and seeing how you like it. You can let your texture paste dry and then go back in and add more if you feel like you haven't added enough. That is what is so great about working with this medium that if you apply it, let it completely dry and you still feel like you need a bit more to the artwork, you can add more on top or add more in different areas and it's not gonna affect the way the piece is setting. So you can also, if you get any cracks, you can go back in and fill it back up with your textured paste because sometimes you do find that if you apply it quite thick, it can crack a little bit but the great thing about using like a Giprock or any sort of filler is that you can just go straight over the top and apply more filler into those cracks and that's not an issue at all. Something that is really important when you are adding your textured paste before you do your layer of resin is to let that texture paste completely dry. So if you've applied it quite thick, it might take a few days for it to completely dry. You definitely don't wanna add resin straight away or even within the first sort of few hours, even though it might feel dry on the surface, it might not be dry completely on the inside. And then if you add resin, it's gonna lock that 
into place and it might cause that texture paste as it starts to dry it's going to naturally contract a little bit and shrink it might start causing massive cracks because of the resin layer that's already set so it's really important to let that texture paste completely dry so i waited 48 hours before i even started my layer of resin just so that way i wouldn't have any issues now, even though I do need to sand my textured paste back so I can get a nice flat surface, I decided I wanted to do my layer of resin first before I do my sanding. The reason behind that is one, I know that when I sand it, I'm gonna get a lot of really fine textured paste dust going everywhere and it's most likely gonna stick into my alcohol ink. Even though I have um, sprayed it and sealed it, it will still grip a little bit and it's gonna be really hard to remove without damaging the alcohol ink layer. And also as I'm sanding, if I'm not completely careful and I accidentally sand across that alcohol ink layer, because it's got no protection to it, I might leave sand marks across and damage the alcohol ink pattern. So if I do my resin layer first and then let that completely dry and then start sanding, it's gonna be really easy to just wipe that dust straight off the resin layer. And if I do accidentally scratch my resin layer, it is not a big deal because I can fix that really easily. So I'm doing a really small amount of resin and applying it really carefully just onto the alcohol ink area. I don't wanna get it on top of the textured paste at all because I wanna be sanding that back once this has set. For my resin, I am using an epoxy art resin. There are so many different brands out there that you can use. This one is a one-to-one -one ratio and it's from Ico Epoxy and it's a really great epoxy to use for your top coats or any sort of art uh, pieces that you are creating. And I'm just being really careful, making sure I'm not getting it on any of the textured paste surface area. It's not a big deal if you do, because you can sand it off, but it just requires a little bit of extra sanding because it's a lot tougher to sand once it has fully set. And I'm just making sure it goes right up to the edges of all the texture paste and going through any areas where you can see the alcohol ink showing through. For this piece, I will be applying two layers of resin. So this first layer, I am gonna be adding a little bit of white through it and then using my heat gun to blow that out just to create a really soft and fine white pattern, just to add a little bit more depth to the piece and add a little bit more interest, creating those extra layers. Now this is completely op um, optional. If you want, you can just do a completely clear top coat of resin without adding any white in. Um, so it's the exact same epoxy resin. I've just added a little bit of white resin pigment and then I'm just using my heat gun to blow that out and to kind of spread that out just so it kind of creates a little bit of a really fine lacing pattern across the surface area. I'm also gonna be using my heat gun to pop any of the bubbles that you might see. You do generally see a lot of bubbles when it comes to a clear layer of resin, just because resin is quite bubbly. So by using a heat gun or a blowtorch, that will just pop any of those surface bubbles. I've left my resin to completely cure for 48 hours before I did start the sanding process. Now I'm just using a 400 grit sandpaper and you can obviously go a bit um, rougher with your grit if you have a lot to sand down and then change it to a finer grit to get rid of any really um, visible sanding marks or you can start with a really fine grit sandpaper if you don't have a lot to sand back. So I'm just going over that until I'm completely happy with how the surface layer of my textured paste is looking. So if you still want it to have a lot of texture, a lot of lumps and bumps, then you don't need to do a lot of sanding. But if you want it to be completely flat and smooth and perfect, then you'll need to do more sanding. Before I'm adding the gold, I have just given this piece a good wipe down and removed all of that extra dust. Now with this gold, you can either use acrylic paint or you can do what I'm doing. And this was a new method that I was trying. So I've actually put a little bit of glue and then added some gold pigment. So I've got a really beautiful gold pigment. This one is called Pale Gold and it's from Barnes. And I just mixed that together and then I've started to apply with a paintbrush just along 
the edge of all of that textured paste. I feel like adding this gold border along the textured paste just really finishes this piece off and it also really highlights all of that beautiful texture that kind of like meets into the resin. Now you can obviously do whatever colored border that you want. I'm doing gold because I added some gold into the original alcohol ink piece and I found that this worked really well using the glue and the uh, pigment together. It set really nicely and was really easy to work with and really easy to clean my brush. Another way that you can do this is with a bit of an acrylic varnish, which I have done previously in other videos. So definitely go and check out some other videos if you wanna see other techniques in how to create a gold border. And to finish off this piece, I'm just gonna add a final layer of resin. And this is just a clear resin that I'm gonna be applying once again, just over that exposed surface area. I'm doing this because I did scratch up a little bit of the previous layer of resin when I was sanding back. And also too, it just locks in all of that gold border that I have just added and will give this piece a really beautiful shine and finish. As always, I'd love to hear your feedback below. Do you think I've nailed the brief with this piece? And if you were gonna do this piece, what colors would you choose? If you have any questions, just leave them down in the comments below. I'm always happy to answer any of your questions. But this is the finished piece. I'm really happy with how it looks. If you are new to my channel, please do subscribe as I post new videos every single week. And if you did find this video helpful, please give it a big thumbs up because it always helps my channel out. Thank you so much for watching.